Ladies and gentlemen around the world, boys and girls, I want to welcome you to an American conservative's exploration of the inspired word of God. I'm your host, Ken McClinton. I want to thank you so much for being here this morning. There is so much on the agenda for today. We will be studying Matthew 5, verses 9, 10, and 11. Rejoicing. Forgive me, uh, we will actually be studying 12, 13, yeah, I'm sorry, ah, forgive me, it's 11, 10, 11, and 12, 10, 11, and 12, Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12, Matthew 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, this morning, however, where it is in the world that you're studying with me today. The title of today's show is Rejoice the Womb of Those That Worship With You, Persecute You for Your Faith. Rejoicing with those that worship with you, persecute you for your faith. Lord Jesus, we ask you right now. Cleanse our hearts. Forgive us of our sins and our transgressions against you. Those that we committed knowingly and those that we omitted. Lord God, there is nothing good in us except you, the Christ, you, the Holy Spirit, pointing us back to the Father. Ask, Lord God, that you touch our souls that you touch our hearts, that you touch our minds, that you touch our spirits, Lord God, that we might be ready to receive everything that is you. That we cast out anything that is not of you, Lord God. That we cast out fear. That we cast out doubt. That we cast out shame and guilt. And Lord God, we begin to love you with love, power, and a sound mind. Lord God, for those who have accompanied us this particular day to come before you boldly, who are concerned with their health, I pray right now, Father God, for healing is the children's bread. I pray right now, Lord God, that you heal their bodies according to your prolific will. Lord God, for those who have wants, financial, economic, political, wanting father god to be close to you i ask you right now father god that you hold them to your bosom that you cause them to remember you in the midst of their persecutions in the midst of their glory that they not reject you in either case because you are greater in them than they who are in the world i ask you right now father god to prepare our minds our souls to receive your word and to test it Lord God when we have received it to know that it is you and not our own interpretation in the matchless name of the most powerful Jesus Christ we say amen ladies and gentlemen this is going to be one of those shows or Bible studies, however way you wish to refer to it, um, that is going to be on point throughout. I tell you to get your seat belts together, get ready to rock and roll. Rejoicing with those that worship with you, persecute you for your faith. We will be looking at 
Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12. Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12. And I know a lot of you have this whimsical understanding that when you walked into the church, it was perfect. You're the only one who has any issues or concerns. And you have come into their presence so that you might know God better for yourself. You don't know that much. You've never studied the Greek, and you never studied the Aramaic, and you didn't study the Hebrew, you didn't go to seminary. All you knew was somebody came past your house, told you that the skirt you were wearing was too short, and that you need to get good with God. And you both uh, put your knee on the ground and you prayed and you received something on you. And that was it. Jesus spoke to me and now I must go to the church. I'm going to tell you this, and it's going to rock your world. The reason why you go to the church is not to confirm your faith. No, I know. I know some of y'all just turned this on off right now. I don't want to know. It is to worship God. Corporally, it is for the rich to meet the needs of the poor. It is to break bread, to receive doctrine, and to give him praise. That's what church is for. But guess what? You are supposed to be prepared to deliver a sermon before you get there. What? Yes, you. Each and every one of us. Is supposed to be able to give a witness for the hope that lies within us. Not a testimony, but a witness. Evidence for the hope that lies within us. That means that as much study as your pastor put into preparing his word, you should have put in twice as much effort to have discovered what he talked about in the last one, to match it to the word, to see if it's true. And then secondly, be prepared yourself that should the bells not ring when he goes to the, <laughs> the most high. And they had to pull him out, that you would be ready to give him. You have to be able to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. That means biblical study is not an occasional thing. It's not a thing that you do just because I'm on the air on Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. Biblical studies is a way of life. Biblical studies reassures your kingship and reaffirms your priesthood. And what God is saying in Matthew 5, 12, the very last, the part B, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Jesus is giving his manifesto, the Sermon on the Mount. Who is he talking to about being persecuted like and unto the prophets? He's talking to his disciples. He's talking to us, us who believe in him. Guess what? Clutch the pearls. You by his faith 
have been elevated even beyond the prophets. Wow, I know. I know. Now, this is the kind of stuff they're not going to teach you in church because they need for you to keep coming back every week with your tithe and your offering. And someday we'll do another study on tithe and offering to show you that that's even a very small requirement of what God actually requires of us. They want a more effeminate message to come out because the message I just gave you is very strong. That, that's that's black coffee that's been sitting there for a few days. Okay, that's strong. Um, it requires something of the man in the household to be priest and king. It requires you to know that Jesus here is not talking just about religious persecution. He's talking about political persecution. Oh, Lordy, Jesus, I thought we're black and we're supposed to all be Democrat. No. I got news for you. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes and the Greeks and the Romans they were in the Arabics. They were all political. Right here in the midst of the manifesto, Jesus is talking about politics. There are those who will sit back in America and tell you that there is a separation between church and state. Jesus didn't see a separation between church and state. Jesus said, what you believe in has to elevate itself to the word and then if it be true that you live it to the point that you are prepared for persecution i am telling you all this is probably one of the best bible studies that you will probably have missed <laughs> this is the one that you want to give to your pastor Yo, pastor, P-A-S-T-A-R, pastor. Rejoicing when those that worship with you persecute you for your faith. Jesus did not give them the little F. He gave them the big F. Faith. Faith of a mustard seed. The faith that says that there is one appointed by God in Psalms chapter 2 who will come in a manifestation the body of a human being live a perfect life a sinless life act as the propitiation for my sin go to the cross die for me be placed in a crypt that's not his on the third day, rise. 49 days later, at day of Pentecost, ex lift be lifted up into heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father. That's Jesus. None other. None other. You see, everything else is but a religion. You got to have faith to believe that. Faith that believes that nothing you do can get you into heaven. Everything he's done already did. That you have to believe without doubt, without fear, without shame, without guilt. You have to believe that God loves you so much that he would sacrifice his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting or eternal life and that he did not come to condemn the world but to save it you got to have faith to believe that there are those during his time period that did not have such faith now I want to do you a great favor and I want to take you to the online etymology I want to take a look at persecute so you understand and those who are here at the broadcast central 
for the Exceptional Conservative Show. It's so glad, so glad to have you here. But I, I want you to understand what persecution is. And then we'll take a look at some wall builder stuff right there regarding um, the founding fathers on Jesus. But online etymology for persecute. According to the online etymology, persecute, persecute, in the verb form, means to oppress for whole, for to oppress for the holding of a belief or an opinion. To oppress for the holding of a belief or opinion. So glad we're studying this right now. Persecution. We don't have to get too deep with this. Comes from the Latin. Persecution. Or persecutio. It is a noun of action. Y'all get that now. This is an action now. It's a process. It's already, it's in movement. I want y'all to get what it says now. What persecution is. Because some of us, have been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, and, 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 and that's, that's, that's it. That, that's your persecution. Really? Really? No, that's life. Here's what persecution is. To follow, to pursue, to hunt down, proceed against, prosecute, start a legal action. Church folk treating church folk just like this. And it's beginning to happen as we move closer in the presidential election to November. <clears throat> and in some cases in your <clears throat> local elections and things of that particular nature. It really is that individuals are following you, pursuing you, hunting you down, proceeding against you prosecuting you, starting a legal action against you. Literally doing everything that they can to disrupt your life. Now, I want to take you real quick to what oppression is. OPP, OPP, the original OPP, oppress. Y'all are not going to like this, <clears throat> but it's true. This is from the Latin, O Premier, and I want y'all to understand what Jesus was talking about, pressed down, shaken together. Pressed down, shaken together. In the Latin, O Premier means to press against, to press together, to press down. I want, remember how you, they get you to tie it a little bit, we give it a little bit more, we say, press down, shaken together. Oppression is when you press down, when you hold together. Figuratively, to try to crush, to put down, to subdue, to prosecute relentlessly. When someone walks up to you as you're walking out their door and they say, I have always wanted to throw you out of my church, to prosecute you, to crush you, to show that they have greater power over you than they submit to you, to press to push church folk acting this way to church folk because of the opinion that you have 
which is built on the faith of the living God. Now, I want y'all to understand something. Jesus, at this point on Mount Sinai, is not talking specifically just about religion. He's talking about the faith that he's offering, which, if you receive it, sets you apart from the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes and the Greeks and the Romans. And the Arabic if you receive who I am that I'm talking about here on Mount Sinai guess what's gonna happen to you in just a few let us go to Matthew chapter 5 and we're putting this all in the chat roll so you can take it back to your pastor and you can show your pastor exactly what I said today and if, if he wants to test it, he can. He will show himself approved. This is Jesus seeing the multitude. He's talking to them in Matthew 5, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of heaven... What, eh, I, I, let, let's go to Strong's G 3772. Strong's G 3772. Uranus. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, that's Greek. What does it mean? Jesus is referring to the entire universe right here. The whole world. He is referring to the seat of order of things eternal and consummately perfect where God dwells and other heavenly beings. He is talking about all of creation. You see, to become persecuted means that you come to you, you you come into the mercy seat of public opinion, and where mercy should be extended, condemnation is given, and you are put down for your political beliefs, which align with your faith. I'm not talking about political beliefs that are maligned or away from your faith. That's not what Jesus is talking about right here. He's talking about when your political opinion and your faith opinion align themselves and people hold grudges and bitterness and anxiety and fear and attempt to do all evil against you to prosecute you for what you believe. What you inherit is everything. What is yours? You are with God and God is with you. I don't know how to make that any more clear. I think I've done it. Matthew 5, 11 says, Blessed are ye, or happy are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. Now, most people stop right there. This is church folk mentality right here on display. Why don't you get this? I've been lied on. I've been mistreated. I've been cheated. I've been talked about. Uh, they didn't like my dress. This is a false manipulation of this scripture stop doing this that's not real persecution because someone didn't like the fact that your dress was yellow and it should have been white that's not persecution 
persecution is this in Jeremiah 1 verse 5 let me take you to Jeremiah 1 verse 5 this is what God says to the prophet remember now y'all disciples y'all disciples I'm included okay we disciples are greater than the prophets because they spoke of what was to come we evidence what is and we are to preach what is this is what God said about Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 before I form thee in the belly I knew thee body mind and soul how can you vote for abortion if you believe in body mind and soul I pay attention now before I formed thee and who formed Jeremiah in the womb the belly of his mama it was God the creator of heaven and earth of the entire universe of the world in which we operate in God formed thee you me the ones that were especially in urban America lucky to get out of the womb just as many babies in urban America die from abortion as they do live from birth Jeremiah 1 5 says before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee I knew thee can I can, I'm gonna make this very clear to you what Jesus meant when he said I knew thee can I can I, I want to play that for you Strong's H3045 no dad. No dad. Yeah, dad. There we go. What does he mean here? To make oneself known to reveal one self. I was God to you when you left heaven. And I'll be God to you again when you come back. But you knew me and I knew you before you made it here to earth. To make oneself known, to reveal oneself. God in this instance, <coughs> what Jeremiah is saying, I knew thee. I revealed myself to you. Not because you were a prophet special but because you were formed guess what God did that with all of us by faith by faith now and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee And I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All power has been given to me, and I now give it to you. There are three things here that God did, and when we come back, we're going to experience what those three things are. You're listening to none other than an American conservative's exploration of the inspired word of God. We'll be right back. So, what do you think about ebooks? Maybe you've never read an ebook before, but you're considering giving it a try. Or maybe you've been reluctant to try ebooks because you don't want to buy another expensive electronic device. Or maybe you already enjoy ebooks, but you haven't been able to find titles from your favorite Christian authors. Whatever your situation, ChristianBook.com has the solution. 
a trusted source for print books for over 30 years, now offers ebooks. Our always free CBD reader allows you to read on the devices you already own without spending money on a new device. Thousands of Christian ebooks at ChristianBook.com means you can shop with confidence and choose from the titles you want. Plus, we are adding new titles all the time. Browse our huge selection of low priced Christian ebooks the same way you would printed books, only now you can go from shopping to reading in seconds. Simply select the ebook you wish to purchase, confirm your account information, and start reading. Free samples of every ebook are available, so you can preview the book first before you buy it. Plus, there's no lengthy app downloads and updates. Accessing the CBD Reader is as easy as going to cbdreader.christianbook.com and bookmarking the page. The CBD Reader holds your ebooks and bookmarks for you, no matter what device you're on. So, you can take your entire ebook library wherever you go and pick up right where you left off. Our customizable options make it possible to read your ebooks in different font sizes and styles. Want a large print version? You've got it in seconds with a simple click of the mouse. Already own a dedicated e-reader? Download your ebooks to your computer from your ChristianBook.com account and transfer them to your device. Try ebooks at ChristianBook.com and start reading your favorite books in seconds. Easy, economical, everywhere you want to read. Welcome to ChristianBook.com ebooks. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to an American conservative's exploration of the inspired word of God. Today we are looking at rejoicing when those that worship with you persecute you for your faith. We are looking at Matthew 5, uh, verses 10, 11, and 12. And we are looking at the fact that God is not talking about just Well, that's just, not just. God is talking about here being persecuted for your faith, which is composed of your political and religious well-being. I don't know if anybody has ever expressed that to you in such a way. Most people go to church and they say, well, we're supposed to separate church and state. God, Jesus didn't see it that way. And he was not talking about ruling in a manner in which most modern progressives would refer to the church being the one making all the laws. What, mm -mm. what he was saying is what you believe in the word must line up in your political life. How do I know that? Because he's talking to the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes, the Romans, the Greeks, the Arabs, right in this particular setting, right here. At Mount, Mount, a sermon on the mount. In Jeremiah one verse five, where we just left off, there are three things that God does before placing you in the womb. Jeremiah five one verse five. Jeremiah one verse five. First, He reveals Himself to you and to me. I'm God. You're my creation. Go. And then he sanctifies. Strong's H sixty nine forty two. Kadash. 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 Kadash is what we're looking at here. It is a primitive root. What he does when he places you in the room, and we're going to define it right here, is he consecrates you. He sanctifies you. He prepares you. He dedicates you. He's hallowed you. You are holy. He separates you from the world. He sends you. Born into sin, we are. 
but knowing from whence we came if your mama told you that you were good because God created you and made you good and still having people slap you on your little feet and say you so bad you so bad God consecrated you he said you were made for a particular purpose on earth I may have given you a thousand gifts or maybe just one but for whatever that is you were born for that reason you are made pure because I revealed myself to you you see me you know me and you'll hear my voice I'm preparing you to go down and to do what my son did through Matthew 28 18 through 20 you are holy because I'm holy now that, that's that's just number two that's just number two but did a preacher ever tell you that God did that for you if he did how could he ever support abortion which is a political thing and then and then lastly before you leave heaven's gate h514 Strong's H fifty four fourteen Nathan 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 He sets you in place. Can I I want to go through all the things. All the things. In fact, I, it is going to run out of time. All the things in terms of that setting. He gives, bestows, grants, permits, ascribes, employs, devotes, consecrates, dedicates. He pays wages. He paid a price for you that you can't pay back. He goes through an exchange process with that. He commits his promises to you. He entrusts your stewardship. He gives you over to the world. He delivers you up. He's expecting you to produce. <clears throat> he gives you the occasions to produce. To report back to and hold accountable. To mention, to utter, to stretch out, to extend, to requite. He requires all of this to you. He sent you into your mother's womb having been ordained as his minister, having been sanctified and made holy, and having revealed himself to you that you might know him and know his voice. <clears throat> He's done all of that as he did for Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He's ordained you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> He's made me a priest and a king. Oh, my goodness. How could anybody want to abort me? How can anybody politically support that? Well, I don't understand what you're saying here. Uh, I, I, I've been voting a, a Democrat because uh, Republicans hate uh, black people. Uh, and, uh, they hate Democrats. Uh, and so that's why I vote. You are kindly misunderstood. You've misunderstood. <clears throat> Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Abortion isn't righteousness. Stealing another man's money so that another man might have leisure is not righteousness. Forcing men to take out insurances that they don't need 
is not righteousness. You must stand for righteousness. It is easier for men to go along with you when you don't stand for righteousness. <clears throat> Otherwise, they will contend with you because you wish to be righteous. Matthew 5, verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You are greater than the prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, you are greater than the prophets. John the Baptist could only talk about the coming Messiah. The Messiah has come, and your role is to tell the world that he's come, and that we should, should live according to his word. Ah, uh, Campbell, let's we, we'll see. You went through all that, uh-huh, oppressed and pressed down and shaking and everything. Uh, and crushing people, uh, and we don't do that in church. We don't crush people. Really? Really? So everyone in your church supports the political organization that's against abortion, right? Be because you righteously speak against that, right? No, no, no. We all Democrats because because black people are hated by Republicans. Really? Where is that written? It isn't. I'm going to give you something now that will help you. It may be a little too late for some people. But for those who hear these words, you may be able to turn around. God is a second chance God. He does want you to turn around. I want you to understand what heresy is. The Latin word is from Greek, hiesis, a taking or choosing for oneself, a choice, a means of taking, a deliberate plan, purposed, Philosophical sect, school. I want you to understand <clears throat> what Jesus was teaching was considered heresy by those in the world, but orthodoxy by the living God. Heresy in the world, orthodoxy by the living God. Literally, individuals have made choices for themselves even though the word had said something totally different from what they believed. I'm going to put this in the chat row for those who are following along at home. I want you to understand the differences between the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes. The Pharisees, the most important of the three groups, are the spiritual fathers of modern Judaism. They believed in the oral law as well as the written law given unto Moses by God. The Pharisees believed that God gave Moses the knowledge of what these laws meant and how they should be applied. And this is according to the Jewish virtual library.org. It's been tossed in there, so you'll be able to study it. They believe the written law to be akin to the U likened to the US Constitution but it was open for interpretation that the law didn't really say what it was written we have to interpret see it's a living thing it's uh it's a, you ain't gotta progress out of it eh. 
This oral tradition was codified in the Talmud. They believed in a Messiah. Church folk believe in a Messiah too. They believed in the afterlife. Church folk believe in the afterlife. Yeah, yeah. The, it, they are compared to blue collar Jews. They, they were considered to blue the. They hung out in prayer, in assembly, in synagogue. Church folk hang out in prayer and assembly in synagogues. They were as far from orthodoxy, as far from faith, as the Christian, quote unquote, who stands and says, that the Constitution guarantees abortion when it doesn't say that at all. Same group. Then you have the Sadducees. See, the Sadducees, they were the elitists. <laughs> they had the special box today. They lived for today. They believed, them, they believed in the literal interpretation of the written law. They didn't believe in no oral law is you know they were close to orthodoxy but they didn't have a hope for eternal life they believed it was all here all right now you got to live for the day right now both the sadducees and the pharisees made up the governing body of israel they were the Jewish Supreme Court, the great Sanhedrin. They were political. So when you see that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees throughout the course of the Gospels, he's not talking to just religious leaders as your church folk would want you to think. He's talking to political leaders who are interpreting his law falsely persecuting those who have faith capital F and uplifting those who have little faith the little F because they've interpreted to work out in their their favor you know they the 71 members of the great Sanhedrin were responsible for interpreting civil and religious law Now, in addition to that, there was a third group. These were the Essenes. They had enough of that political crap. Tell me if this doesn't sound similar to what's happening in America today. They had enough of all their, their political stuff. They wanted to be independent. They were not going to belong to one party, and they weren't going to belong to the other. They just want to be, I want to be out of Jerusalem. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. They're disgusting. They're corrupt. They hated the Hasmoneans because Jonathan, the rabbi, killed Rabbi Jesus, not the Jesus that went to the cross now. That name was used before. killed him because the rabbi Jesus was chosen by the Persian general Borgasus to rule the Sanhedrin. He was so jealous. Johanan killed but Johanan or Jonathan, however way you read it in Nehemiah verse 12, killed the chosen rabbi. Borges was so angered by the fact that he did this that he ordered the temple destroyed.
Now, Johanan or Jonathan ruled 39 years, uh, the great Sanhedrin for the Hasmoneans. And his son took over after him. But there was murder in the temple. And the scene said, if these people would take their politics to such a level that they will openly be willing to murder one another in the temple, we can't be a part of that. We're getting up out of this camp. So they moved out of Jerusalem. And they, believed, they began to live a monistic, monistic forgive me, life in the desert. They lived by strict dietary laws uh, and a commitment to celibacy. This sounds like someone who ran before Jesus, doesn't it? Yes, John the Baptist. Now, let's just go across the three classes or the three political parties of that time period. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes. According to social class, the Sadducees were the priests, the aristocrats. They looked down upon people. The Pharisees were for the common folk. And the Essenes, they didn't want to be bothered with none of it. The Sadducees had the authority of priesthood. Under Zadokites. They were called the Zadokites. Uh, the Pharisees were disciples of the wise. That's why they made it up as they went along. <laughs> and the Essenes were teachers of righteousness. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Jesus must have been talking in these three scriptures about the Essenes. No, he wasn't. Although there is an affinity for the Essenes because of their desire to get away from the other two corrupt institutions of Jerusalem. He was not speaking specifically to them in Matthew 10, 11, and 12. According to the, their practices, the Sadducees put their emphasis on priestly obligations. The Pharisees apply priestly laws to non-priests, to the common folk. So you make it up as you go along, you know, you fit right in. The Essenes referred to inspired exegesis. They looked at the text and applied it to their lives. The Sadducees calendar was a lunar solar calendar. Pharisees lunar solar. The Essenes was a solar calendar. Hellenism or their affinity for the Greeks. The Sadduc Sadducees loved the Greeks. Mm, smooches. The Pharisees, eh, we'll make it up as we go along. The Essenes were against the Greeks. They saw them as corrupting the children. And, and, and what manner could they possibly corrupt the children? Oh, well, maybe they told them that little girls can use the restroom with the little boys and the little boys can use the restroom with the little girls maybe the sadducees believed in free will you have the right to choose but they couldn't choose eternal life it, it didn't exist the pharisees yeah we kind of believe in free will Although, the, if it works in our benefit, where free will is beneficial, you know, financially, well, we'll, we'll go with that one. Uh, you know, if not, no. Uh, the Essenes did not believe in free will. They believed that your fate was cast at birth. You were just going to die a certain way. In the afterlife, the Sadducees said they don't believe in none of that stuff. The Pharisees believed the resurrection, but Jesus certainly wasn't the resurrected one. Mm hmm the Essenes, they believed in spiritual survival. Lo unto us. Eat another grasshopper. Oh, lo unto us. The Sadducees took the Bible literally. The Pharisees, mm, you allow some seminarian who wants to make a little money, 
reinterpret the Bible so that gay people can preach on Sunday mornings. You know, hey, it works. It fits. We'll do that. The Essenes believe that you have to apply the Bible according to exegy. Many different scriptures coming together in the concept of what is. Oral Torah, Sadducees said no such thing. Pharisees was equal to the written Torah. You can make it up as it was given to God, given to Moses. The Essenes believed in inspired exegy. Now, why do I tell you all that? I tell you all that today because there are some who believe that there's nothing in the Bible about politics. When the very word of the Bible has been set there for you to govern your life and your nation. Samuel Adams, the signer of the Declaration of Independence, said this, I rely upon the merits of Jesus Christ for a pardon of all my sins. The name of the Lord, says the scripture, is a strong tower. Thither the righteous flee and are safe, Proverbs 18.10. Let us secure his favor and he will lead us through the journey of this life and at length receive us to a better. I conceive we cannot better express ourselves than by humbly supplicating the supreme ruler of the world, that the confusions that are and have been among the nations may be overruled by the promoting and speedily bringing in the holy and happy period when the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may be everywhere established and the people willingly bow to the acceptor of him who is the Prince of Peace. He also called upon the state of Massachusetts to pray this. The peaceful and glorious reign of our divine Redeemer may be known and enjoyed throughout the whole family of mankind. We may with one heart and voice humbly implore his gracious and free pardon through Jesus Christ, supplicating his divine aid, and above all to cause the religion of Jesus Christ in its true spirit to spread far and wide till the whole earth shall be filled with his glory. With true contrition of heart to confess their sins to God and implore forgiveness through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Our founding fathers understood that they would differ on sometimes the specifics. They also agreed that slavery was an abomination, at least a few. In fact, a large majority. Thomas Jefferson wrote of the abomination in the first draft of the Declaration of Independence. Ladies and gentlemen, they were willing to be persecuted for their faith in a God who believed that all men should be free, have been revealed to by him in heaven before creation, has been consecrated and sanctified to do his will in the earth it has been ordained to spread the gospel to all the ends for those of you who choose to believe in Jesus Christ and his word and that your political beliefs and religious beliefs must align themselves according to his word you will be persecuted and prosecuted just like the prophets. But already, you've seen God. His love for you has set you free. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you all so much for being with me today. Next week, we will continue Matthew 5, 13, and the Sermon on the Mount series. Continue to live a life that's worthy of persecution. God bless you. It's a love story like no other. From God's heart to yours.
and for 30 years, it's been at the heart of every book, Bible, CD, gift, and resource from ChristianBook.com. Over 500,000 products, always at the very best value. ChristianBook.com. Everything Christian. Because it's our story, too. Thank you.